Hello and welcome to the High School of Business webinar. This is Lisa Berkey, the Program Director. Here's our agenda for this webinar. We're going to first start with a little bit about MBA Research, the not-for-profit organization uh, that brings you High School of Business. Then we're going to talk about serving college-bound students, why, why High School of Business was developed and um, how it's fulfilling that mission. Then we'll get into the technical part, the components of High School of Business and what it means to be a High School of Business site. And then the program impact. Um, uh, we're seeing great results from this program from, for students who are participating in schools across the country, and I'll share some of those statistics with you. And then finally, how you can ask questions and what your next steps would be to learning more about the program. MBA Research is a not-for-profit. Uh, we've been around for 45 years, and our, our goal is to support educators uh, in business and marketing, primarily in secondary education, but we also work with post-secondary education as well. We are a consortium of state departments of education, so this map shows you which states are members, um, and, and we work uh, to meet the needs of, of teachers um, and educators in, in these states and make materials, um, research-based materials available to them for their students. Here is our website, and so I want to get this out there for you right away, um, and you'll see the arrow there on the left. For more information about High School of Business, that's where you go on the website. Just click that quick link, and you'll always be able to get to the latest information about the program. So how does High School of Business fit within what MBA Research is doing? MBA Research, um, as the name implies, is grounded in research-based uh, learning standards. So you can see number one there says business, and that's because everything that we do starts with the business community. We do primary and secondary research with business leaders to find out what, uh, what, what their future employees, your students, need to know when they get to those jobs. And so all of that research then uh, is turned into learning standards number two and then all of the rest of what we do flows out of those learning standards. So we develop curriculum and uh, instruction, uh, we provide professional development, and then all the way around to number five, proof or assessment. So High School of Business is a complete program, and you're going to see as we move through this presentation how all of those things come together to put together a complete system, a complete program that's designed specifically for your college-bound students. So let's go ahead and talk about those students first. So as, you, as we take a look just at the numbers for a second, uh, if you think about your high school, there, if the numbers translate nationally, 14.6% uh, of the students in your high school who are headed to college are going to major in business when they get there. That's more than any other group. Uh, so if we're just looking at serving the masses, serving the, the, um, the, mo the most students out of school, business would be your first priority out of school for serving college-bound business administration students. Another interesting number is this one right here, 20.5% of students who graduate from a four-year post-secondary institution graduate with a bachelor's degree in one of the areas of business administration. And when I say business administration, I mean finance, marketing, management, uh, all of those that, that fall underneath the business administration title typically at post-secondary institutions. And then number three, the third number, 12%, for those students who receive an associate's degree, 12% of those are in the areas of business administration. That is the 
the third most popular uh, currently uh, behind a couple of the healthcare fields. So that's a look at the numbers uh, and really the bottom line here and why I wanted to share that with you is there are a whole lot of students at your school who can benefit from college uh, level business administration programs at the high school level. It only makes sense that's where they're headed once they leave you. So maybe you're like this teacher um, and many others across the country who despite those numbers, every year at the end of the school year uh, when it was being announced which students were going where and what they were going to major in, would always hear names of students that she had never seen in her classroom even though she's the business teacher and the students are going on to major in business in college. And so um, MBA research began to hear that story uh, frequently from teachers as, as we'd go to conferences and speak with teachers across the country. Why aren't these college-bound students taking business administration courses? Numbers-wise, it just doesn't make sense. And so then we began to look into that issue um, and found out that you know, part of the reason was that the courses that were being offered in, in, in some high schools really weren't designed for college-bound students. Um, and so that particular market uh, needed to have a program uh, that, that would prepare these students for college, perhaps align with college credit, and that's how the idea for High School of Business began. MBA research knew it was time to raise the bar and make a difference with, with a program. And so let's talk about how High School of Business does that, its components. Here's a list of the components and we're going to go through each one of them uh, in, in a little bit of detail. So I won't read them off the list here, we'll just go ahead and start with the standards. So if you can remember that first chart that I showed you, the solar system that flowed around in a circle starting with research with the business community. MBA research develops national learning standards and so it makes sense that high school of business starts with the learning standards so we oh, um, we have we use those standards and we also looked at college business administration programs that's where these students are headed so we need to know what they're going to be taking in college so we can best prepare them for that uh, in order to do that to get through content that would be covered 9th through 12th grade plus up into the college, le college level um, for a couple of years. We needed to deliver uh, the curriculum at an accelerated pace. And then in order to provide that broader set of content uh, that is, an, is similar to a business administration program at a college, uh, we en encompassed parts of the three cl career clusters that you see right there. So one thing you'll notice as you look through the High School of Business course names and the curriculum itself is that it's, it's a broader based business administration program. So here are those courses right here. These are, are courses are written as semester courses and you see that the grades 10 through 12 and this is um, this is one example of the way the courses can be laid out at a school. Uh, they are bolded and that's because those are the required sequence. So students um, to be completers of high school of business, they would start with principles of business and by the time they graduate they've completed all, all the way down to number six, the capstone business strategies. Now schools can also elect to offer the two ninth grade courses, Leadership and Wealth Management. Those are, uh, uh, of course, valuable skills, uh, leadership and also wealth management, which, which is an accelerated personal finance. Really great skills for anyone in a school to have. Also gives students a taste of high school of business, a taste of business education um, and possible business career path and so enables them to make a good decision on whether they want to continue on through, uh, through the rest of the course sequence. I want you to, to note that, that, as I said, this is one example. Um, these courses can work well in block scheduling, they can work for trimesters, so although the sequence remains the same, um, 
they can be uh, grouped together for for uh, block, for example, and used in that way. Project-based learning is the heart of High School of Business. So it's the pedagogy that's used to deliver this content. And so I'm going to, I think the best way to show you what this means really is to walk you through one of the projects. And what I'm hoping that, that I'll be able to do here uh, is to paint a bit of a picture for you of what it would look like if you were watching inside a high school of business classroom. What does a project-based learning classroom look like? All right, so first of all, uh, a little uh, precursor statement. There is a difference between projects and project-based learning. Projects typically occur at the end uh, of a course or at the end of a unit after the students have learned the content, then the teacher announces a project that then they go back and use that content with. Project-based learning happens as the con the project happens as the content is being taught. So the students start the semester or start the project um, with an introduction and an explanation of the project they're going to be working on. And then as they need information to complete that project, they learn about the content. Okay, so this project uh, occurs in the uh, sophomore level business econ course. And students uh, at the beginning of this project are, are shown a picture just like this one right here. This is a real picture of a vacant lot um, that used to be not too far from our offices in Columbus. And it, um, they're going to be shown a picture of a vacant lot that's in your community or a vacant building. And they're going to be challenged with determining what's the best use of that lot from an economic standpoint. Okay. So it's one lot, teacher identifies in advance, and then in teams, they're charged with that. And as they, as they go about their work, you see there the three different learning outcomes that they're going to be, be working on. So what the, the students are, are going to do in this project is they're going to start out by doing some primary and secondary research. So they're going to need to find out what, um, what the community members, the stakeholders, think about this lot, their ideas for, for what should be on there to best serve the community. They're going to do some research on what that lot used to be, find out how it is zoned, um, and generally learn all they can about that vacant lot. Um, and, and in the process, come up with ideas for what, what would be the best use of it in the future. Once they've determined what they think the, the top three ideas for that lot could be, then they're going to use a decision matrix, which is a numerical tool to make smart decisions. And so they're going to learn how to use a decision matrix to make any type of a business decision, but they're going to use it to determine what, um, what would be the best use of this lot. And then once they have, uh, com have completed that, they're going to give a public presentation and to each team will share how they think that the, the lot should be used. And so at that public presentation will likely be people from your community who are stakeholders. So as a teacher, you would, you would want to invite the Zoning Commission. You may want to invite uh, some kind of economic group or a neighborhood group um, so that this, this real information gets to the people who can use it. So that's the project overview in a nutshell. Here are a few pictures from what it looked like in the classroom. So this is a team of four students. They are planning their project right now. So this, um, these small groups is what you'll often see in a high school of business classroom. They have a project plan. They're starting the class period by going through that plan and talking about what they're going to accomplish in class that day. They're going to be using 
technology in the classroom every day. So they're going to do some of that secondary research they can find online about how that property is zoned, for example. They're also going to be working on a presentation for, for the, the end of the project, so certainly they'll be doing some PowerPoint. Um, they're going to be putting together that decision matrix, which looks a lot like a table, so they'll be, they, they'll be using software to put together that decision matrix and, and uh, probably an Excel spreadsheet to plug in numerical form to to complete that decision matrix. Local business often comes into the High School of Business classroom. Uh, usually uh, someone from the business community, in this case uh, someone from the Zoning Commission, came in to kick off this project and talk about the lot give some, and, and charge the students with their project. And then of course at the end uh, that same person came back uh, and was able to um, view the presentations and give feedback to each of the groups. Now the check that you see over there on the right is actually from a different course, a leadership course, a different project, um, but it's a great illustration of how these, uh, uh, most of the projects in the High School of Business program have a real impact on the community. So in the vacant lot project, um, they're giving valuable information uh, conducting valuable research that then community leaders can use to determine what to do with vacant lots and vacant buildings. In the check on the right, um, the leadership course uh, did some things, uh, conducted a project that led to a donation to the Humane Society. So it's very common um, to to have some kind of a public presentation where a, a check is presented or information is presented uh, from the students to the community. Each of the uh, High School of Business sites is operated, implemented, managed by a steering team. So this may be similar to an advisory council that you're using right now. Here are the people that would be included on that. Uh, notice that there's college faculty. There are at least a couple of business professionals. This is a cross-functional team that works on implementing and managing the program. And so there's an implementation plan. These folks really get their hands dirty and, uh, and help to run, run the program. Professional development is a key part of High School of Business. As you saw, there are six required courses within the program, and there are two days of training associated with each of those. But first, the teachers start with two days of training course called Pedagogy. In that, um, they dive right in, in groups, just as their students will be in the future, to complete a project. So for two days, these teachers, these four right here from last year, um, and their, their peers were uh, assume the role of the student, and we were given a project to do, and this is them working on their project plan right now. So those post-it notes you see behind them are, are uh, them putting together their project plan, moving things around as, as inf new information comes in. The trainers for High School of Business are all experienced High School of Business teachers themselves. So you're going to get to hear not only about the content and the projects, but also how they do it in their classroom. And then collaboration is a key part of the program. Here's a teacher sharing. Uh, what she came up with as they were given some time to work on a project and prepare prepare for their classrooms um, and uh, with their and share that with the peers. Some other examples of how the professional development to lead teacher collaboration is incorporated are listed here. There are um, web conferences that are available, uh, and in general. From a national perspective, we do everything we can to connect these teachers with their peers. There's great opportunity to learn from each other. After all, the, all these teachers are teach, teaching the same courses in schools all across the country. So it's a great opportunity to talk through issues with each other, share new ideas with each other. Assessments. The bottom line is that there's a wide variety of assessments for every project, um, and there are between one and 
seven projects in every course. For the projects themselves, they are graded using rubrics that are provided. You'll also receive a test item bank um, that is used for weekly quizzes. So if you can envision that vacant lot project again, as the students are, are working through that, as an instructor, you're also once a week giving them a quiz to make sure that they're truly learning the content in a deep manner as they move through their projects. There are end of course online proctored national exams, final exams, and then there are also pretests. Pretests are 100% aligned to the final. They're an optional part of the program for schools who are interested in offering them. Post-secondary connections is certainly one of, one of the most valuable benefits that a program like this with rigorous accelerated learning that reaches up into college level learning outcomes can provide. So schools uh, and steering teams that offer high school of business are challenged with putting into place at least one value added option for their students. And so some of the most uh, common value-added options that, that we see schools put into place are, first of all, credit through a local college or university. So dual credit or articulated credit. Um, we have many, many examples of these credit agreements that, um, that we can share with any schools that come into the program about how, how things are being aligned for college credit. We also know that students who complete High School of Business are going to be well prepared for two of the CLEP exams. The, uh, those are the college credit exams that um, the college board offers. Students will be prepared for principles of marketing and principles of management. Many schools offer honors weighting. We have two national agreements. With one with Bowling Green State University and one with Bellevue University, and you can learn more about the details of those on our website. And also, we have an end of program exam uh, that that you may want to offer your students uh, as a um, in addition to the end of course exams uh, that that students in the program take, and that's ASK certification. All right, let's let's see how these components are having an impact on students. Of the schools that are currently offering high school of business, 56% of them uh, have a local college credit agreement with a two-year university and 59% with a four-year university. The average number of credits uh, that are offered through these agreements is eight, uh, although we've, we've seen ranges from three all the way up to 18 credits. 22% of the schools have uh, the courses aligned for honors scoring, which of course is a, a huge benefit for students. And then here's what the students are saying as they, as they exit the program at the end of their senior year. They're feeling pretty confident as they head into college about what they have learned in the program, 93% confident in their future careers, 92% confident that, this, that high school of business helped them to succeed in college, and then even 77% have realized that their participating, participation in high school of business, teamwork, projects, frequent presentations to the public, uh, writing, math, uh, like in, used in that decision matrix, really help them to succeed in their core academic courses as well. Schools themselves uh, complete an annual self-assessment form, and so they report in uh, that participation in the program has helped them to build relationships with these groups. And then we're particularly proud of this too, that um, through, through teacher training and the peer co collaboration, we know that the program helps teachers um, to continually improve their skills uh, and, uh, and excel. So we're glad that, that High School of Business has been a real asset for educators across the, uh, across the country. Another benefit that we frequently hear about is that the, the rigor um, in the real projects that are in high school of business 
naturally prepare students for DECA, FBLA, BPA competition. And so that really makes sense when you think about it. These students are, are delivering presentations frequently in the classroom, and so they get really good at it, um, using learning outcomes to deliver content, fact-based presentations. We're tracking high school of business students as they go off to college uh, through a, an organization called the National Student Clearinghouse. And so um, while we're still pretty young and we, we don't have a whole lot of data yet, we do know um, that of our first group of students who have uh, graduated from high school and gone off to college, 73% of them did enroll in college with, within um, six months of graduation and that ex exceeds the national average of 66%. Once they get to college, anecdotally we're hearing that they feel really good about their experience in high school of business. They feel like they're ahead of their peers. And that's exactly the point, right? Now they're, they're grounded, they've got preliminary information for college, they can really excel once they get there. When, um, one part I think that as a, as a teacher you never want to overlook is, is when your students enjoy and the, the content, they enjoy the class, they're being engaged. And so project-based learning brings that to schools. And so we're, we're pleased to report that, um, that teachers love using the curriculum because their students like using the, uh, learning through this type of curriculum. So if this looks like something that you might be interested in offering in your school and in your classroom, what I would recommend that you do is go to our website uh, and you see there the URL once again. There's a section called Getting Started. Uh, see what, what your next steps would be for getting more information. You're always welcome to contact me. Uh, there's my email there. I'd be happy to talk with you further uh, or communicate by email. Thank you for participating in this webinar and I hope to hear from you soon.